Hey there YouTubers, JB Coins here with a very, very strange and interesting coin that means a lot to us and even more to uh, Grove Minting. Uh, the founder of Grove Minting um, has a connection to this coin. This coin sold at auction this weekend at Heritage, Heritage Auctions. It sold for five thousand six hundred and forty dollars. It is an eighteen sixty four, and I hope I can say the name right. Fuchtwanger, uh, Louis Fuchtwanger uh, coin. Uh, this is the front, and this is the back. It's a three cent coin, and uh, you can see it's got the name of his his company on there. This was a hard times token. And here's the grading slab, MS63, uh, Fuchtwanger composition, uh, 1864 New York three cent, okay? Um, the history of this coin is, it, it's just, it's, it's one of those things when I saw it, I, I I'm like, I know this coin. And then when I put it together with Grove Minting, I remembered. And that's where, as if you're old enough to remember Paul Harvey, Paul Harvey used to say, here's the rest of the story. I'm gonna give you the rest of the story. Hang on a second. Okay, Jared, I met Jared, the owner of Grove Minting Company, uh, after we shot the video, if you guys remember, about the 1977 pattern dollar coin that he made and released only 700 copies of um, that were in nickel. Um, and it was the coin, we, we, we called it the, the, the coin that should have been because it was the coin that was supposed to go uh, and become the 1977 dollar coin before the Susan B. Anthony. It was designed by Frank Gasparro. Um, it never got struck, obviously, so it became what was known as a pattern coin. It was a pattern that never got used. Jared got a hold of it, got permission to use it, and produced a series of those coins, which we featured in a video. Uh, Jared got wind that we, that we had featured the video and, you know, uh, kind of created a bond between us, and, and we've since got the silver issue of the uh, 77 that he made uh, 250 copies mainly because you guys bought him out uh, almost entirely uh, from our channel uh, bought him out of that 750 production run and kept asking him what about a silver one and what about a silver one so his silver run was pretty much sold out before he ever really produced it so he never even announced it publicly I don't think uh, so We've kept in communication, and I remembered him saying something about the Fuchtwander scent. So when I saw this one at the auction, I went back to his website, and I remembered him saying that it was very important to him. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do something I rarely do, which is I'm going to try and read this without sounding like I'm reading it. Um, this is straight off of his website. You can go to the Grove Minting Company's website. And, uh, and, and read it for yourself. You can see his version of the 2011 commemorative proof of the 1837 Fuchtwander scent in one-tenth uh, troy ounce, about the size of a U.S. dime for 10 bucks, is what it says right there on the screen. Um, I and that's as of today, so I believe he's still got plenty of them in stock. I don't know how many, but the ad's still up. Um, but here's what it says. The inaugural release of the Grove Minting Company, the 2011 silver commemorative of the 1837 Fuchtwander scent. This commemorative is proof struck in solid 0.99 silver, weighing one-tenth of a troy ounce at 18 millimeters wide, about the size of a U.S. dime. The production is li was limited to a striking of 1,000 pieces by Grove Minting. Our signature commemorative. This is the first and only commemorative Fuchtwanger collectible worldwide. The history behind our commemorative token. The Fuchtwanger is a coin circulated by Louis Fuchtwanger during the 1830s and 40s in the U.S. 
He was born in Firth, Bavaria on January the 11th, 1805, received a doc doctorate at the University of Jena, then moved to New York City. This guy gets more and more interesting as I read this from Jared's page. He was primarily a mineralogist, I mean, metal metallurgist, and chemist, but also worked as a physician and was a member of a number of learned societies. He wrote four books on mineralogy and chemicals. In 1837, to alleviate the need for small change during what was called the hard times, which was a hundred years before the Great Depression, folks, Fuchtwinder created, created tokens made of argentin, commonly known as German silver. The phrase was coined by Fuchtwinder. An alloy was made of copper, nickel, zinc, tin, and trace metals. It was considerably cheaper to produce than the extraction of copper for the government minted half cents and cents. The hard times, an especially rough period of economic recession following the dissolution of the Second Bank of the United States. In other words, the government went insolvent and they closed the Second Bank of the United States. So people were hoarding money, any kind of money. Much of the small change in circulation at the time, roughly 1837 to 1844, was composed of clunky copper half cents and cents, the large cents, privately produced or various cuts and whole silver coins of foreign origin. That's where shaving a haircut two bits came from. It came from the hard times. It didn't come from the Great Depression. They would cut up Spanish coins into eight pieces. That's why they were called pieces of eight. Um, so all this stuff just kind of comes together and I can see where, where, where this would, you know, get Jared's juices going. Um, in fact, it would not be until 1857 that Congress would enact into law that legal currency to be coined of the United States mint origin. In 1837, Fuchtwanger, this guy was something else, I keep saying it, presented his one cent coins to Congress to approve as legal coinage. This was probably the first attempt to circulate nickel coinage in the United States. Congress denied his request, but Folkbanger persisted in his production and circulation. Laws banning private coinage were not passed until 1864. Between 1837 and 1844, thousands of Folkbanger cents came out of his New York City pharmacy to the discerning dissenter Discerning collector, over a dozen different die casts have been identified, affecting the relative rarity of each specimen found. And here's where it comes full circle. Aside from one cent tokens, in 1864 he also produced three cent tokens, which are considered extremely rare, as few specimens have survived. He was also noted for producing stamp like casts featuring his common theme of a pouncing eagle attacking a snake. And if we go back to the original video from the auction, what have we got? We've got the 1864 three cent that ended the run of Mr. Fuchtwanger when it was made illegal and led to Jared creating Grove Minting Company and all the coins and commemoratives that he's made since then, including the 1977 pattern dollar, or as I like to refer to it as the dollar that should have been. Um, hope you guys found this interesting. Uh, it's not the most valuable coin at the auction this weekend, but uh, to me, it, it, was, it was one that kind of hit home a lot closer than, uh, than a lot of the coins that, that we've been shooting videos about. And hopefully you guys find this interesting, especially you longtime subscribers that have followed it and have bought some of Jared's coins uh, in the past. Um, and, uh, and, and the history now behind his company and the history behind this coin and how they're intertwined. So hope you guys liked it. Please continue to like, share, subscribe, hit the notification button so you get notification when we post a new video or tomorrow when we go live chat, our usual Sunday 4 p.m. Eastern time uh, uh, live chat now. Uh, hope to see you guys there. And until next time, JB Coins signing out.